Hi RP clients, Dr. Jen Case here. Uh, today we're going to go over how can you figure out if uh, foods not on the recommended food list fit into your current diet plan. So the first thing that you need to think about when you're trying to figure out does this particular food fit into my plan is you want to look at the template assumptions that we have both on the RP clients Facebook page and a lot of you are sent out this information when you first sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching. As you can see here, one ounce of lean meat is going to have about six grams of protein and one to two grams of fat. Your healthy carbs, per 15 grams of healthy carbs, you can expect to find one to two grams of fat, one to two grams of protein, and one to three grams of fiber. Things are considered a vegetable if one cup of that particular veggie has five net carbs. And then a serving of fat is going to be a food that has 12 to 15 grams of fat. And per those 12 to 15 grams of fat, you may find up to 5 grams of carbs and up to 5 grams of protein. So once you have this information here, these template uh, assumptions, you want to switch over and look at the nutritional facts that can be found on the food label. You can look it up on nutritiondata.com if it's a fresh food like a squash or some kind of meat or something like that. The key things that you want to look at on this nutritional facts are the total fats, the total carbs, and the dietary fiber because that will play a role, and then the grams of protein. So let's look at our first food. Here we have a possible lean meat option. Here is a chicken sausage. Get asked a lot if chicken sausages can be used as a lean meat option in the morning. Well, let's look at our plant assumptions. One ounce of lean meat is gonna have six to seven grams of protein and one to two grams of fat. Let's hop over, look at our nutritional facts for this particular sausage. We're asking if this is a protein, so the first thing we're going to pay attention to is the grams of protein. So for this particular product, one sausage link has 12 grams of protein. 12 grams of protein is basically two ounces of lean meat. That tells us that for these two ounces of lean meat, we can have about four grams of fat. However, these particular sausages have nine grams of fat. So four grams of the fat would naturally be found in the product. That's fine. The other five grams will be considered part of your healthy fats, or be basically one third of a serving of fat per link. Another protein option here, plain Greek yogurt. Okay? So we wanna use this Greek yogurt as our protein. Again, we consider one ounce of lean meat is six to seven grams of protein and one to two grams of fat. So that means if you're using yogurt as your protein source, it does not have to be fat free. You can go for the 2% variety because there's naturally going to be a little bit of fat occurring in your lean proteins. This particular brand of yogurt, uh, one serving has got 23 grams of protein. 23 grams of protein is basically four ounces of lean meat. So you could have up to eight grams of fat. This particular brand only has 4.5 grams of fat per serving well within range to be considered a lean protein. One thing you do have to consider though, yogurt has carbohydrates. This particular brand does have nine grams of carbohydrates that can count towards your healthy carb amount. However, if you're taking, if you're consuming this yogurt at bedtime in place of casein, those nine grams are not a huge deal unless you're into cut three, which is a very strict diet then you do want to consider those nine grams of carbs. Another slightly different question here. What about flavored Greek yogurt? Can that count as a protein? Yes, of course it can count as a protein. We've already gone over our protein assumptions, so I'm not gonna say them again. Uh, we look at this particular brand of yogurt and it has 12 grams of protein. So it's gonna be basically two ounces of lean meat. Our two ounces of lean meat can have four grams of fat, okay? This one here has only 2.5, totally within range. But look at those carbs, 17 grams of carbs. All of them are coming from sugar. You do need to count those towards your healthy carb amount. Don't worry though. I know some of you may be concerned seeing how much sugar is in this. Is it gonna digest really rapidly? Is it considered a high glycemic carb? One thing to consider, the protein present in your Greek yogurt is predominantly casein. So that is gonna slow down the digestion rate. 
So that'll slow down that delivery of sugar to your system so you won't see as much of a spike in your uh, glucose response. Next, let's look at the option of adding in a quest bar as an option for your lean protein source. So we come over here and we look at the grams of protein in this blueberry muffin bar and there are 21 grams per bar. So 21 grams of protein would be equivalent to three ounces of lean meat. In three ounces of lean meat, we can find up to six grams of fat. On the nutritional facts, six grams of fat present in this bar, good to go in terms of fat. But look at all of these carbohydrates. This particular bar has 22 grams of total carbohydrates. However, 14 of those grams are coming from fiber. Your body does not break down fiber to yield energy, so it doesn't count towards your calories. That leaves us with eight grams of carbohydrates remaining. If you look down here, this uh, below sugars, you'll see zithritol. okay? Urethritol is a type of sugar alcohol, and your body does not break down sugar alcohols like it does normal carbohydrates, so we do not count those either. And that leaves us with five grams of carbohydrates to count towards our healthy carbs. So yes, you can easily incorporate a Quest Bar into your diet in place of a lean protein. So now let's switch gears and look at possible carbohydrate options. May get a little boring eating rice for every meal, so you want to mix things up. Let's look at our plan assumptions when it comes to healthy carbs. We think about per 15 grams of carbs. So per 15 grams of carbs, you can expect to see one to two grams of fat and one to two grams of protein, as well as one to three grams of fiber, depending on the product. So we look at this pizza crust here, and we go over to carbs first, because that's what we're looking at. It has 22 grams of carbs. So we're gonna take that 22 grams of carbs, divided by 15, because we look at per 15 grams of healthy carbs, that's 1.5. So in this pizza crust, for it can be considered a healthy carb, it can have up to three grams of fat, up to three grams of protein and up to 4.5 grams of fiber we look over here at our nutritional facts only has one gram boom within range dietary fiber two grams totally within range protein it's got five. Oh my no no don't worry those two grams is only eight calories no big deal you can count this as your healthy carb another common carb question the good old Kodiak cakes, where do they fall in? So your Kodiak cakes are gonna be counted as a healthy carb and as a protein. But first, let's look at it as a carb. So our, our healthy carb is going by 15 grams of carbs and what we're looking to see here. If you go over to the nutritional facts on your Kodiak cakes, this particular variety has 30 grams of carbs per serving. So for 30 grams of carbs, we're gonna assume we can have up to four grams of fat up to four grams of protein and up to six grams of fiber. The Kodiak cakes only have two grams of fat, so they're well within range there. They have 14 grams of protein, which is 10 grams above what is allotted, so we gotta keep that in mind, and only five grams of fiber, so the fiber is well within range. The 10 remaining grams of protein are gonna to count towards your lean meat, okay? You can go kind of either way. The 10 grams falls in between the one to one and a half ounces of lean protein. So it's kind of where you want to say, if you want to say it's just one ounce, if you're only doing one serving, it's fine. If you're doing multiple servings, you're probably going to count this as 1.5 ounces of lean meat. Uh, another possible option here for healthy carbs, Halo Top Ice Cream. Uh, can you include this sweet treat as a healthy carb option? Uh, as you'll see here, the, the Halo Top Ice Cream would actually count towards your healthy carbs and a majority of your protein. So but let's first look at the carbs uh, per serving. Now do notice that I'm breaking down the nutritional facts for the red velvet flavor. You will need to look at each individual flavor as they do differ in nutrient contents, okay? But for this example, let's look at the red velvet flavor. So when you look at the total carbohydrates, you'll see that there are 14 grams of total carbohydrates in this ice cream. However, there are three grams of dietary fiber and four grams of sugar alcohol. These are your non-digestible carbs, so they don't really yield any calories in the human body, so we don't count them. So that gives you seven net carbs per serving. 
We're going to take our seven net carbs, divide that by the 15 grams of healthy carbs that we use in the assumptions, and that gives us one half. So based on that, we assume that per serving for this to count as a healthy carb, it can have one gram of fat and one gram of protein. If we look over and check the nutritional label, we'll see that it does exceed the fats and the proteins per serving allotted for a healthy carb. It has two grams of extra fat and five grams of extra protein. So this extra per serving would count as about three fourths of an ounce of lean meat. Now most of us can't really control ourselves and eat just one serving. We're gonna pop that lid and we're gonna down the entire container. It's okay, we all do it. So looking at the entire container of Halo Top ice cream, that's four servings, which would come out to be 28 grams of carbs and three ounces of lean meat. Uh, if you work through the math problem, you'll see that in four servings of this Halo Top ice cream, you end up having eight extra grams of fat and 20 extra grams of protein. If we look at our protein assumptions, one ounce is equivalent to six to seven grams of protein and one to two grams of fat. So those 20 grams of protein would equal three ounces of lean meat. Three ounces of lean meat naturally has six grams of fat. The extra two grams, not a big enough deal to get excited about. So yes, Halo Top ice cream can work into your diet plan. It would count if you consume the whole container, it counts as 28 grams of carbs and three ounces of lean meat. If you're able to stop at just one serving of ice cream, it only counts as seven net carbs and three fourths of an ounce of lean meat. Let's look at some options when you're wanting to mix up your vegetables. Butternut squash. Does butternut squash count as a veggie? Well, let's look at our plan assumptions. For a food to be a veggie, it needs to have up to five net carbs per one cup serving. If we look at the nutritional facts for butternut squash, a one cup serving has 22 grams of carbohydrate, zero grams of fiber, which means the net carbs is 22 grams. This is not a vegetable. This is a healthy carbohydrate. Similar question here. What about spaghetti squash? Is it considered a veggie? Let's look at the nutritional facts for a one cup serving of cooked spaghetti squash. As you can see here, this one cup serving has 10 grams of total carbohydrates, two of which are dietary fiber. That means this spaghetti squash has eight net carbs per one cup serving. That's above the allotted amount for what we consider to be a vegetable. However, if you drop it down and only consume three-fourths of a cup of cooked spaghetti squash, the net carb amount is only six grams, which is much closer to what we recommend and completely fine to consume as a vegetable. Now looking at our final nutrient category, healthy fats. Let's look at hummus as an option for your healthy fats. Uh, plan assumptions, we assume that one serving of healthy fats is going to have 12 to 15 grams of fat, up to 5 carbs, and up to 5 grams of protein. We look over at our nutritional facts here. Our one serving size of hummus only has 5 grams of fat. So that makes it one third of a serving of healthy fats, which means it can only have 1.5 grams of carbs and 1.5 grams of protein. We look at the protein first, only two grams, that's basically 1.5, that's fine. The carbs, however, it does have three grams of net carbs, which is a little high, but it's only one and a half grams if you only eat one serving of hummus. Even if you count uh, three servings of hummus to make a full serving of healthy fat, it's only 4.5 extra grams of carbs, which you can easily deduct from your healthy carb amount if you're on a very strict plan like cut number three. So yes, we can count hummus as a healthy fat source. Another healthy fat question here, what about using cheese as your healthy fat option? Well, let's look at this brick of sharp cheddar cheese. The nutritional facts here, one ounce has got 10 grams of fat. So 10 grams of fat would roughly be two thirds of a serving of healthy fat which means per serving we could have 1.7 grams of carbs and 1.7 grams of protein. 
We look at the nutritional facts on the cheese. There are no carbohydrates in this particular cheese, so that's totally cool. There is six grams of protein. Again, the extra four grams is not a huge deal unless you're on a very strict diet, in which case you would count it as half an ounce of lean meat. So yes, you can have cheddar cheese or any kind of cheese as your healthy fat source. I will caution you though, that your cheese is gonna be very high in saturated fat. So you don't wanna have it as your fat source for every meal, but once or twice throughout the day is totally fine. One final question that I get pretty regularly is what about fat-free cheese? Well, your fat-free cheese obviously would not count as a dietary fat because it is fat-free, so it has zero grams of fat. What it would count towards is your protein. If you look here at this particular brand of fat-free cheddar, one-fourth of a cup serving has got nine grams of protein. Those nine grams of protein would technically be one and a half ounces of lean meat, but if you wanna be flexible with your diet, you can count it as just one ounce. If you're gonna use a full half cup of this particular cheese, that's 18 grams of protein. That is a full three ounces of lean meat, but it is a nice option if you're looking to spice things up and switch things up. Uh, I hope that this presentation helped clear up some of the questions you guys have regarding how do we figure out if a certain food can fit into our diet plan. Thank you for choosing RP and Hope you guys meet all of your body composition goals.